Take us through like a day in John's life or okay. something. Yeah, for me, um, I think uh, f- for me, one of the number one things that permaculture has helped me learn um, is actually the first rule of the principles, which is observe and interact. And mm-hmm. that simple act every day of observing quite closely what's going on around you, uh, you know, be it the weather, be it uh, wildlife, uh, it, it, it can be anything, but observing and taking note of what, what's going on around you, I think that that is an incredibly powerful thing on so many levels. One, you're just more in tune with what's going on. And there's also this kind of like, you know, kind of like outside of yourself, if you want to call it spiritually, you can, um, aspect to it that um, is incredibly satisfying and, mm-hmm. and, and really beautiful. Uh, so I think on a simple level, on a day-to-day basis, observing and interacting is a huge con- like component of what I do. Great, I like that. Yeah, it's probably my favorite. Yeah, it's to take note of. It's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, so, and in this, um, in this like new understanding or this awareness um, that the permaculture has brought you, where do you see um, not just yourself, um, but the the community as a whole in in integrate or involved in this? Like, why should like how does it impact? Um, people and yourself like positively like, what, why should somebody care and where do you see yourself taking um, yourself with this right so I think it's re- a really important point is that it's it's never about the individual that it's it is about the community yeah sorry <laughs> sorry <laughs> we're not sitting here permanently <laughs> okay um, I'll start that over um, sure so I think the important thing is that it's um, a community and a group of people that the idea that one person alone can only can only do and achieve so much. And, um, and so, sorry, reframe the question for me. So, what? Um, why? Why? Sh- why should I care about permaculture? Right. And sort of tie into that. Like, where do you see yourself okay. in? the next couple months, right. years down the road, right. and how it's going to impact your life then. Right, okay. So I think um, anybody that is looking at the world around us right now, it, it's, it's easy to watch you know, mainstream media and even see what's going on in our cities and um, in rural heartlands and stuff like that. Um, it's easy to become very depressed and bogged down in a lot of what's going on. Um, Permaculture has kind of given me a way to feel like uh, I, as as an individual and as a group, can impact and change these things, and I can steer that the story of some of these things to an outcome that I would I would greatly prefer. Um, it's really hard to say where I'll take this over the next couple of years. The hope is that um, on my farm, as the as the farm manager, that I can. Um, almost make it like a beacon within southeastern Pennsylvania that people can come and say they spent the time and they worked on it and now they've got this flourishing farm that will be able to support its community, its surrounding community for hundreds of years. You know, that like the community is going to collapse before the food system is going to collapse. Um, and to me that's just, that is such a beautiful and empowering thing to work towards. Appreciate that. And just one last thing, um, you said, um, and this kind of caught me, um, and and maybe you didn't mean it in the way that I took it, but you said I as an individual and I as a group. And I I think that's, um, that's that's a concept that's gaining popularity. Could you... Tell us what yeah. you mean more by that, like uh, sort of community or... I, I think it's, um, we've always been taught this idea of separation, that there's there's you out there, you know, behind the camera, there's you watching this now, and then there's there's me, and that we're separate. But the, that story is really changing, uh, that what, what happens to me um, inherently happens to you, and what happens to you happens to me, that... We need to take that mindset. That we're not in competition. That we're actually intimately in cooperation with one another. So, yeah, it's, I, I didn't even think about when I said it, but the idea of framing the I as the larger I is, is a really beautiful thing. And actually, I'll, I'll tell a quick story about that. That there's many indigenous cultures that, um, if say somebody in the village is sick, um, a villager from that village will say, "I am sick." And 
doesn't have this concept of like, well, they're sick. To them, it's the same thing as saying, oh, well, uh, it'd be like we said, well, my kidney has, you know, horrible kidney stones, but but I'm fine. Like that's that doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. So we need to start thinking of each other as in the same capacity, and not just each other, but the place where we live and work with the animals, the, the plants, all of that needs to be represented as I. Thanks a lot for your time, John. You gave some really great insights. Appreciate it. Cool.